Welcome to Hobby with Ollie. My name is Ollie, and this is my hobby. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I create lava bases. It's a really visually striking scheme, and it's a lot of fun to do as well. If you're planning to follow along, I'm going to be doing today's tutorial using an airbrush. However, all the effects I'm going to do are still possible with a paintbrush with a bit of glazing and a bit of hard work. I do still sometimes use a paintbrush when I'm painting models with sculpted details on the bases, like Dominion Zephon here, who I covered in a video previously, which you can find linked up here. So whichever method you're going to use, grab your paints and let's get started. We're going to start by building the structure of our base using corkboard. Corkboard is readily available on sites like Amazon or in craft stores, and it's really useful for providing sort of jagged rock effects as it gets a really organic look whenever you break it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Break up your corkboard into manageable chunks. Because I'm doing this on a large Space Marine tank base, I'm gonna keep my chunks pretty big. But if you're doing it on smaller bases, just reduce down the size as required. Make sure to keep them different shapes as we don't want them too uniform. Once you're happy with your little pieces, take them and arrange them on the base so that we're ready for gluing. Make sure that if you're sticking a flying stand to the base as well, like I am here, you leave space for it in the middle. To stick my corkboard onto my base, I'm using Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel. Gel glue is amazing for this because we're sticking quite large parts onto our base. The extra viscosity of the glue also makes it really nice to work with. Give your pieces a push down to make sure they're stuck securely, and then move on to the next piece. I'm doing this in a clockwise direction to make sure I don't miss any, and once they're done, give them about 10 minutes to dry before we come in to start painting. I'm painting my base separately so that you can see the effect, but I'd recommend if you're gonna do this on your models that you build the base beforehand and stick your model to it before you prime and then start painting your base. I'd recommend using a black primer, and then we're gonna come in with a mix of black and corn red. You don't need to worry about getting the tops of the rocks, the bits of corkboard that you're stuck on, as those are going to be repainted black later on, but everything else you can pretty much cover with this dark paint. Whenever you're using your airbrush, I'd always recommend doing a bit of a test spray before getting started on the model. Everything looks good, but when I start trying to spray actually onto the base, I realise there's a bit of clogging happening. This generally happens because your paint is a little bit too thick, or your pressure is not enough. I decided to thin down my paint a little bit more, and it comes out a lot more smoothly. Now that we've got our base paint supplied, it's time to talk about the lava effect. One of the really interesting things about this effect is that it basically inverts everything that you know about edge highlighting. What we want to have is in the deepest recesses near to our corkboard areas, we're going to have our lightest colours. This flies in the face of conventional wisdom, but it's because of the nature of lava and the fact that it'll be hotter at those points. Because of this, these hot areas are going to be more on the orange, yellow or even white side of the spectrum, as opposed to the areas on top of the pools where it's kind of been sitting for a bit longer, your lava will have cooled and so you'll end up with those sort of dark reds or even black as the lava fully solidifies. With this in mind, for each of our subsequent layers, now we've got our base colours down, we're going to try and get lighter and lighter colours near to the edges of our corkboard sections. Our next colour is Mephiston Red. When I'm painting bases for my troops, I'll generally slap down this colour over pretty much everything again. The corn red is only there as a catch-all in case I've missed any areas. You can start to see here that I'm angling the airbrush to catch the areas underneath those lips of the rocks. This is really going to help to sell that the lava is bubbling up from underneath the ground. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, the airbrush is really useful for slapping down those colours and blending them together really seamlessly. But it's okay if you don't have an airbrush. You're going to be using a lot of glazing to make sure that you get the technique here, as that's going to make sure that you've got smooth transitions between your different colours. If you are interested in learning a bit more about blending, there's loads of tutorials online. I cover it a little bit in my video on Death Company Marines up here. Next, I'm going to be doing a layer of Evil Sun Scarlet, and again, I'm going to be applying this in much the same way as my Mephiston layer, but being a little bit more particular. So I'm just picking out a few of the kind of channels between the rocks and making sure that those look really fiery red. Next, I'm going to start mixing Uriel Yellow in in greater and greater parts until I really get up to that fiery orangey glow that I want. As we apply more and more Uriel Yellow with each layer, I recommend putting less and less onto your base, picking out the really hot areas where our magma is rising to the surface. 
Here you can see me putting more Ural yellow in for the next layer. I wanted to show you this so you can see the method of mixing it in the airbrush cup. I'm putting it directly in there, but because this is quite a light paint, it's going to also tend to be quite thick. I'm going to pop my airbrush thinner in, a good glug, and then give it a mix around with this old makeup brush. Once I'm happy with the consistency, about the consistency of milk, then I'm going to start spraying my test sprays and really focusing on some very hot spots inside of the lava. I'm going to finish off my highlights, but I think I went a bit too light at this stage, so I'll bring it back a bit later. As a final touch, what we're going to do is going to apply a little bit of wraith bone through the airbrush. We're going to apply this to just little spots to indicate that it's absolutely white hot. Um, we want to be sparing with this because it can quite quickly overdo your paint job. Now I had a sneaking suspicion that I'd probably gone too far, but I decided to paint the tops of the rocks first, just to see how it looked in context. I'm just painting these with black, and again, I'm using a big old makeup brush, as I don't need to be too neat at this stage. With the black on top of the rocks done, I did decide that I'd probably gone a little bit too yellow on my base, so it was time to bring it back. I used a filter of watered down Mephiston red mixed with black, in order to again bring back up that sort of redness, as I'd kind of lost that through my yellow highlight layers. After this I added in a bunch more black and used this to kind of rebuild the areas of solidified lava in the middle of the pools. I also turned down the pressure on my airbrush all the way down so that I could get really really precise control over where I was putting these. Once I'd finished adding in those bits of solidified lava I was much much happier with the effect. For a final flourish, I'm also applying Mordant Earth, which is a Games Workshop texture paint with a very deep black volcanic colour, in order to represent those kind of cracking, solidified pools of lava on the top. It looks quite glossy at this point because it does take a little while to dry, and I even came in and gave it a blast with a hairdryer, but once it's dried and cracked, it really helps to sell the whole effect. To blend in these Mordant Earth areas, I decided to come back in with my airbrush with my corn red and black mix, just around the edges of them so that they kind of seamlessly transition into the lava. With that last bit of blending done, the effect was complete. And there you have it, that's my method for creating really cool lava bases which are really easily replicable as batches so you can do all of your troops at the same time. Get all your corkboard down and then start applying those colours. Let me know if you'll be using this lava technique on your next character miniature, or if you've got any tips and tricks for painting lava in the comments down below. I look forward to reading them. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I'll see you all next time.